Hi, how are you? Um, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Marjorie. If you're not new here, my name is still Marjorie. And this is Marjorie Made. This is my um, YouTube channel about cross stitch and crafting, but mostly cross stitch. Um, I'm filming at night, so I apologize for the lighting. Um, we are back to all natural hair. I know that I got a lot of comments on my hair in every video because it's different in every video. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Um, this is it. That's what we're dealing with today. Um, I have a lot to talk with y'all about. It's been three weeks. I didn't record last week. Um, just been really busy. A lot of personal stuff going on. All good, but just busy. So, um, I might divulge some of those details later on for y'all. But anyway, I hope that you're having a great week. And I hope that you're having a good day, evening, night, wherever you are. So, Buckle up, we're gonna go over um, a bunch of stuff. And you know, my plans have changed a lot. I think since the last video, I had planned like five new starts, didn't happen. I, I did a few. I started a couple unplanned things, you know. You just gotta go with the flow. You gotta do, do what brings you joy. And sometimes that's not starting five new things for Valentine's Day, I mean. Sometimes that does bring me joy, but I've been just so busy and I feel like February is just here and gone, here and gone. So let's just hop into starts for February. Um, if you've watched any of my recent videos, um, you'll know that I'm hosting the hashtag lovebug sal um, by Sprouting Lupine um, on Instagram and Etsy. I've had so much fun um, seeing everyone's posts and sharing them on my story. Um, all of the color conversions, the little, um, even powder conversions. I know someone who wasn't super fond of praying mantises in general, so they switched it up and it's so cute. Like, I don't understand how they just did that, but yeah, all the color conversions, the fabrics, I just, it just brings me so much joy to see that on my timeline and be able to share that with y'all. And, you know, I'm proud of myself for hosting my first sale. Like, that's kind of like a big deal. And I'm like brand new to this. So anyway, my goal for February for the Love Bug Sal was to hit 50%. Don't know if that's gonna happen. I'm gonna try, but um, I have gotten some progress though, so. Here it is. This is done on, let me look at the fabric. My bad. People ask me all the time and you would think I would remember at this point, but okay. So it's a 32 count dark olive. It's a Lugana. So uh, this is just one that I pulled. I got this actually at, I think it's called the Stitching Shop in Denver back in January. So, uh, kitted up this whole project there, this beautiful green fabric. Oh, it's so pretty. So right now I am working on the big um, Lotus and working my way down. I kind of wanted to give myself some options of where I wanted to go after this. So I, I can come down from here or finish this off and then go down, but loving it so far, so cute. And I don't know if in my last video it was released at that point, but the same designer released their 2023 Valentine's pattern and it's got mushrooms, it's pink, you know, say less. So that will be in a haul eventually. Um, I don't know the brand of this fabric or like the dyer, but I'm going to take this with me to my LNS and try and find a pretty pretty close match and stitch both of them on the same fabric and hang them together like a little companion like some sister patterns just hanging up I think they'll look so cute so can't wait for that so my next start is I think it's stinking cute I can't remember the designer off the top of my head but I'll put all that information here for y'all um let me take the needle off of it 
um this was one of my planned like five starts for valentine's day or whatever but i actually did start this one so i think this is the only one i started out of the whole batch sometimes i just get really into making plans and thinking i have more time than i have and you know thinking i'm just like this stitching machine which i am but i have yearly goals for like multiple other pieces i gotta do whip go and when do i think i'm gonna start five things for valentine's day in the shortest month of the year i don't know sometimes you just have to be like i don't know too much i'd rather be too much than not enough so anyway i started stinking cute I got about, I'd say this is halfway. I have one more little skunky over here and then I have stinking cute um, text for the bottom. I did this in one day. I think I was watching The Last of Us on HBO, episode three, if you know, you know. Um, so I had to stop because I was uncontrollably sobbing. So um, this, fabric i'm assuming it's a 14 count i just pulled it from stash i had a friend who went to an estate sale and just grabbed a bunch of ada so it's like it's really light blue um and then the flosses are just from stash i tried to get as close as possible to the actual pattern but i love these back back stitched words i'm not a back stitcher i but i mean like come on you have to admit that looks so freaking good. Anyway, so that's my start on this. It'll be a quick finish. Not not February, not in February, but I do have a couple spots on my whip go board for like pick a finish. So this is this is a candidate for that. Drink break. So my next start, which is also haul, but we'll get into that later. Um, so Julie from Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World um, shared with us in our little group chat. Well, it's not just me, but there's a group of us and she's in that chat. And she sent us a picture of this sampler that she reproduced. And it is so cute. I'm not a sampler girl. I am not. But that is changing Mostly because of this group chat, which I'll talk about later in my gratitude section. But anyway, so me and the girlies decided that we were going to just start this. It's called the misspelled sampler because, I mean, everything is misspelled. It is, so, I just love it. I just love it. The colors, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So pretty. So I went to my LNS. I kitted up the whole thing. I started it, it's my first one over two on 32, 36 count, 36. Yeah, so I'm doing one over two on 36 and it's life changing. I was always scared to do 36 count because I'm a loop starter, my preferred method. But then I saw a video on how to loop start with one thread. So, overcame that demon, and now it's, like, all uphill. All uphill. It's still in my Q-snap because I'm still working on it. Oh, gosh. I'm making a mess. It's a behind-the-scenes mess. And my fancy floss has somehow gotten caught on the zipper. So. Anyways. So, this is my little start. Just start it up in the corner. Okay, but can we take a moment for this fabric? This is 36 count Oaken. If I picture this plus, ignore the dog. Anyway, so I was looking at the back of it. So we have this beautiful, beautiful piece of fabric. Um, I went in to my illness to get this up and didn't really have a fabric in mind. Um, Julie has one in the pattern that, you know, she's stitched it on and she explains that. Um, but I kind of was just looking and it's honestly a little bit more like mauve -y, like pinky 
in person. I probably, I cannot get a good photograph of this fabric. It just looks brown, but it definitely has like a pink undertone, which I think is going to be gorgeous with these colors. So these are all the colors for the misspelled sampler. Like, can you even? I love the pinks and the greens. I just can't get over it. So, um, not that I needed to start, but you know, sometimes, sometimes things just come into your life and you just have to take it, take it as it comes. And that's what I'm telling them. I'm, I'm, I'm sacrificing to stitch this. I'm not, but you know, I did make a new, um, electronic whip tracker and I only have like 24 whips so that's better than I thought I was doing so I'm kind of just like okay with all of these starts um I do have more planned which we'll go over in the plans but anyway if you haven't already go to Julie's profile and she has I think it's called Gumroad it's like the website but it's Hemlock and Rye is the stitchery um go buy this pattern Come stitch it up with us. We do have a hashtag. We have a couple hashtags because in our little chat, we wanted to call it Bones is Rotten. Bonds is Rotten. So, because in the in the pattern, it says Bonds is Rotten. So, we have that cell hashtag. And then we also have misspelled sampler cell because we thought some people weren't going to be silly goofy with us. And that's fine. That's fine. So you can use either hashtag misspelled sampler style or hashtag bonds is rotten style. Whatever suits your fancy. You know, you do you. This is your world. Play by your rules. That's what I always say. But anyway, let's get on to whips. Yeah. If you've been following along, um, you'll know that I am... Attempting to do the Fruits of Plenty sale this year. All of it. Every single bit of it. Um, that's roughly 4,000 stitches a month. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, I think I'm doing okay. I'm a little bit behind. I think I still... Kind of embarrassing. Still have 3,000 stitches. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I. Mm, it's okay. It will be okay. We will be okay. Um, so I'm working on the second part. I don't know. I'll post a, I'll put a picture up of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. Um, and then what the first part looked like last time. Um, I've since moved the Q-snap and I had to adjust it like four times because I couldn't get it right. Now I have it right. So now we're not going to touch it until I have to move on. So I just kind of moved over working on the second part I'm just like oh, this is so pretty sometimes I just like don't want to do things that I have to do or like have to do I don't have to stitch this but if I tell myself you have to do 4,000 stitches a month or you're gonna get behind and you're never gonna do it then my brain's like hmm let's just not do it let's break the rules let's do whatever we want but um I'm trying to put a little bit into this every day I mean, I genuinely love this, and I think it's so pretty. Next time, I'll take it out of the key snap because it really does look just so gorgeous all together. But this is Fruits of Plenty. Um, if you follow my Instagram, I post more updates on there in general. Like, I'm on here every two to three weeks, apparently. So, um, if you want to see more updates, I do try and post more often on Instagram. Not every day, but about a week. Every week or so, I like to update the followers about my progress. Okay. Next, we have my Whipgo pools. Uh, okay, thing with Whipgo, I had two projects on my Whipgo. It was Very Merry Christmas Town and then the Mysterious Halloween Town, I think, by Frosted Pumpkin. Um, I have ditched those whips. I gave them to my sister who is just getting into cross stitch. Speaking of, here's a little picture of her first finished cross stitch. She did so good. Oh, I just, I'm just so proud of her and it looks so good. It looks so good. 
anyway, so enjoy this while I explain the whips that I've ditched. So, I, my only, one and only finish so far this year was the Autumn Harvest by Frosted Pumpkin, which I think Frosted Pumpkin is just so cute. Like, all of their stuff is so cute. But I just don't think that these two pieces are ones that I would hang in my house. And so I didn't really, like, want to put forth the effort to stitch them. I mean, I could gift them, sure. But, you know, with all the things that I want to stitch, I don't want to work on anything that I'm not loving and that I'm not going to love forever. So um, I asked my sister if she wanted to take over the whips. I wasn't too far into them. I think I only did, I worked on each of them for like a month last year when they were in season. So she has those now. They're in a good home. So no worries. So anyway, Christmas Town was pulled for whip go. And so after I ditched that and the Halloween Town, I went ahead and subbed those for other projects. Which doesn't apply to the first one because the first one's already on it. Was on my whip go. I'll explain the switch when it becomes relevant. Oh gosh. Hold on. Um, the first whip go is Victorian Mansion. Um, it's a dimensions kit. Which throw me for doozy. This. How do you. If you do dimensions kits or kits in general. Like how do you manage this? It drives me Nuts. Nuts. Um, I will say this is a very challenge, challenging pattern. That's what I'll say. Um, it tests my perseverance every day. But my whip goal is to work on this for seven days. I have worked on this for three days. Four days total. I worked on this. Um, it was one of my new starts for my birthday back in December. So, um, still to finish those Londo stitches, but... That's what I have so far. Again, I love a good challenge. This is a challenge for sure. I think it's on my whip go board twice. Seven days for each goal. So I'll have at least two weeks on this by the end of the year. I have no, no want, no desire, no plan to finish it this year. Um, just one that I'm going to work on. It's really beautiful. Like, it's really, really beautiful, um, as a finished product. But, like, honey, that's what it'll look like. I mean, come on. A pink house. A pink Victorian mansion. If I could, like, pick a house. If someone came up to me today and was like, hey, pick any house you want to live in, what would it look like? Mm, that'd be it. Cats included. Yes, please. So, we love a pink house. We love Victorian style architecture. Architecture? Not a word I can say. Um. Anyway, I'm getting so off topic. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm working this part and like up. So that's what that's what y'all saw. A little refresher. So. That's kind of what I'm doing. Stay tuned for my next video because, yeah, I'll have five more days, hopefully, on it by the next time I film. And as I've said previously um, about my whip goal specifically is I don't um, put, like, a stitch count or a time count on my whip go goals, my... Time is very limited and precious. So, I mean, some days I have time to stitch for hours. And other days, I can do 10 minutes. So, I try really hard to stitch as frequently as I can. But when it comes to whip go, I don't want it to be stressful. So, I give myself goals to work on it day. So, I pick it up seven times. Um, well, technically not, because if I picked it up twice in one day, that would still be one day. But you get what I mean. Like, I don't tell myself I have to do 100 stitches a day or anything for it to count as a day. So, if you'd like more clarification on that very confusing explanation, let me know. My next book go project, which this took the place of the Christmas Town this month, is Miss Solar Ellipse by Nora Corbett. Uh, this is a memorial piece for my cousin who passed away last May. I normally work on this. Um, 
I've been misspeaking in my other videos. I keep saying the 15th and the 19th, but it's the 13th and the 19th. So, um, anyway, I work on it those two days, unless it's a weekend because I work all weekends and I don't have time to stitch, but I try and pick this up at least a couple times every month. Or if I'm thinking about her extra, I like to pick it up and work on it. Um, this is where we got. I'm starting to come out on this wing. Very much beautiful. And so this is going to take over Very Merry Christmas Town. So I'm working on this for seven days for Whipgo. I think I only have one day. That's separate from my other two days. So I'm going to just like work on building this wing out and then move over if I have the days for it. This is one of those projects that like I, I'm i in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry to finish it. Like it's very beautiful and it's very meaningful. Um, but it's just one of those things like since it is a memorial piece, like it's just another like finality when it comes to her passing. And so if I just work on this, when I think about her, then like that's enough for me. I do want to stitch a second one for her parents. So at some point, I don't know if this will be their copy or if this will be mine. I'm not really, I'm not sure. I don't put too much thought into it other than just, just working on it and thinking about her when I do. All right, y'all, my last whip to show y'all is at the easel, charted by Artisy. It is my full coverage, my baby angel, my, I mean, Picking favorite projects is like picking favorite kids or like pets. Like it's not really like fair to ask someone what their favorite project is. But this is it. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is my golden child. Um, my firstborn full coverage. And I love her. Like, are you joking me? So I've been doing Royal Rose. I'm working on the face right now. You can see. Anyway, so I've been doing Royal Rose. And for some reason, I was like, hmm, let's just go down and then go over. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Anytime I have that idea, I need to just tell myself no. Because I have over, like, I don't know if you can see all this parked stuff. It is a mess. And normally, when I just do my cute little 10 by 20s, I don't have that problem. But... So now I'm reconverting this back to Royal Rose since I decided to mess it up. So I'm working on this, this row right now. And then hopefully by the time I get back down here, nothing is messed up or miscounted because I was trying to do too much. But yeah, I could just look at it all day. I think, like, are you joking me? It looks good up close. It looks good far away. It just looks good. I mean, I'm not taking very much credit because, like, yes, I'm putting the stitches in, but, like, I didn't just sign the, the, the pattern, the chart. I'm just stitching it. And it is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, my God. It honestly looks so much better on camera. <laughs> I mean, it looks really good in person, but, like, you can really see all the detail. I could cry. I would highly recommend, if you're doing a full coverage, to do Royal Rose. It helps so much with, like, counting. Like, you just have to worry about your 10 by 20. And if your count is off in that, you're going to notice. And you're not going to be halfway down the pattern and going back and being like, how did I mess up? How did I miscount? Like, it keeps everything very, like, straightforward. You can see it coming along. You're not jumping around. Like, it's just... I love it. Um, This is approximately 13,000 stitches. My goal for February was 13,000, so we're doing good there. I still have a week left, and I just, like, pick this up at night. I'm ahead of my goal, and I'm loving it. Live, laugh, loving it. Favorite project by far. No offense to my other projects, if you're listening. I didn't mean it. So, let's move on to plans. You know me. I'm gonna make a plan. Will I stick to it? We'll see. I'm going to try. But I feel like this is very, like, this is reasonable. I really like to go hard when I really love something. So I'm trying to rein it in. The whole five stars for February Valentine's? I don't know what she was thinking. 
We don't know her. So, I'm trying to be more realistic. Um, a little personal life update. I am moving soon, about three hours away. So, it was very short notice. Um, expected, but not at the time. Like, we thought we had a little bit longer. We don't. So, we're moving about three hours away. Um, like April or May beginning of May. So have a couple months to, you know, pack up this craft room and my three, 400 books. Like it's a whole lot. So I don't know how much stitching I will be getting done in the next couple of months. I need to be sure to have my priorities and obligations taken care of. Um, but I was telling my friend that, you know, like I need to figure out what to pack. And she was like, just pack up your craft stuff. Like you can go one month without crafting. And I was like, do you even know me? I said, this is my sanity. Like, genuinely, it helps with my anxiety. So, like, I just sit down and stitch at night and it's just like, everything melts away. I just, I, I could not go one month without stitching. And could you imagine how far I'd, behind I'd be on my goals? Mm -mm. So, no can do. Um, I will probably pack up, like, kitted projects that I don't plan to start. But, I mean, you never know. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, back to plans. If you know me, I love a sale. I love participating in a sale. I love hosting a sale. And I love full coverage. Which, I mean, I've not even finished one. But, like, I'm obsessed. I love full coverage. So, me and Hannah, my girly Hannah, we decided to do a cheeky little full coverage start in March and we're going to do a stitch along. Um, we're encouraging people to get patterns from the sewing shop. Um, and then we're doing two specific designers. And so we want to encourage people to select a pattern from that shop or those designers, um, or the artist. I mean the artist that the full coverage is based off of. Um, but as long as it's a full coverage, start with us, please, please, please. Um, I will be starting Bellamy. I know I've talked about it in a couple of my other videos. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to start it. I just, it is a gorgeous. So cute. Um, and the hashtag is going to be rip my whips sell. Cause you know, rip my other whips and also my whip list because I'm adding another full coverage. So just a little cheeky full coverage start. Um, I know that Bridgen from the Museum Stitcher is going to start. I know for a fact. I think Cam's on the fence. But I really want her. I really want her to participate. I just want everyone to do full coverage. Like, I know it's not everyone's thing. But if you haven't tried Royal Rose full coverage, give it a shot. Honestly. Like, it... I just... This is my sew box, and it is Royal Rose Full Coverage. Love it. Love it. It makes the whole process not as complicated. And, I mean, if you have any questions about the method, um, let me know. There are, like, plenty of videos out there about it. Um, some of them aren't super clear, and I have kind of adapted to my own style of it. Um, like, for example, they... They say to park, let me get my, park to the right. So normally there's like string sticking out and that was getting in my way and really frustrating me. So what I did is I would park to the right, but then I would tuck the thread back under. I'm going to show you all the back of this project. Don't want no jump scare. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. If you like a neat, tidy back, this is not parental advisory. Look away. Look away. So, as you can see, I have parked to the left, and then I parked to the right. The right. Parked to the right, and then pulled it through the back and snipped it. And so that way on the front, there's not any threads hanging. And I, I'm in the Facebook group, and they said that that was kind of a main complaint, is that those threads were just getting in the way. So I recommend... 
like I just went over like three holes. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. I just went over like three holes, tucked it back behind, and I always go one block over. So by the time I stitch this block, I'll be able to, you know, cut those out. Like I pull them through with my needle and then trim them close to the fabric once I get done with this. So I always park it one over so that I'm not too close and that it gets stitched over to secure it. If y'all want like cute little demos, let me know. Don't know how I'll do that, but I'll figure it out for y'all. Anything for y'all. Okay, so full cover start March 1st. You have like a week. I'm sorry that um, I don't have more warning. I just didn't record last week. I have a lot going on. Anyway, also, as I had stated previously, we have the misspelled sampler. Hashtag Bonds is Roten. I think it's, yeah. Bonds is Roten Sal. Don't forget that part. Or a misspelled sampler if you're straightforward. Use that one. For Whipco, I am going to finish my seven days on Victorian Mansion and then my seven days for Miss Solar Ellipse. Fruits of Plenty, I have about 3,000 stitches I have to get in a week. On top of five days and six days of the other ones. The math isn't mathing, but I could I could work on both in the in the same day. Um, my at the easel goal met done. She's good. Don't have to worry about her, but I'm going to because I love her and I'm probably gonna work on her more. It is what it is. So I'm about to go over haul. We love a haul moment. Um, I don't have much this week. I'm trying to save money. Because of this whole moving situation, I don't need to bring things in just so I can have more stuff to pack. And also, moving is expensive. So, let me gather my things. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, I already... Oh, my gosh. I switched my camera up. Sorry about that. Um, when I went to my LNS to kit up the misspelled sampler... I'm just, you know, browsing. I was going to just look at a couple things. Go get my fabric. Go get my floss. Mind my business. And then the sweet, lovely ladies at the Citrus Garden informed me that they were having a 30% off sale. Um, I don't know what happens to my brain when someone mentions a percent off. Because for me, 30% off is like kind of 40% off, which is basically half off. Again, it doesn't make any sense, but for some reason, I just go feral. 30% great. That is an awesome discount. But for some reason, when she told me my total, I was like, that didn't seem right. I thought everything was free, you know? So logic is not there, but I did get some really good stuff. Um, I did kit up, got my Oaken, buy a picture of this plus. I got my, all my floss. And then I was just like, I'll just go get a few other things. So first I have love letters to... Mm, let me take it out of the package because I can't read it and I don't want to lie to y'all. I'm a lot of things, but a liar, not one. Okay, so it's love letter to the cross stitch nation. Come on, so cute. So beautiful. Bart string samplery. I've had it on this for a while um, and I just needed a 30% off sale to finally like push me to get it. Because I was like, 30% off. I have to get something other than what I came here for. I can't just get all the stuff I was going to get. You know. It really, it really be like that sometimes. And then I picked up. So the Summer House Stitchworks has this collection. Um, a seasonal collection, if you will. So we have Autumn Provides. Spring Awakens. Ugh, that pink. And then we have Winter Cometh. Cute, beautiful, wonderful. Um, I've had my eye on the fall one for a really, really long time. Those colors are just so pretty. So I get up to the counter. <laughs> so I have these three, right? And 
She was like, well, could you not find them all? And I was like, no, I did. I was like, I just, I should like summer. I have a personal vendetta against summer. And I don't know if y'all have ever been to the South. Summers in the South are no joke. No joke. It is hot. It is humid. It's like you're swimming through the air. I can't, I don't even want to get started on summer. Ooh, pattern. Um, I, I just don't even start on how much I dislike summer. And so for that reason alone, I will not be stitching the summer version of this. I don't, I, I just, I don't. Summer's not my jam. This hair doesn't do good in the summer. It's hot. It, ugh. Hate it. So, um, she was just kind of like, ha, ha, ha. Like, <laughs> she's like this weirdo doesn't like summer so much. She's only going to do three of a four, like, collection. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I will stand by it. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so, my next bit of haul, well, my last bit of haul for this episode of Marjorie Maid is going to be my February Thread Club by Color and Cotton. Can you even? Guys. You know, again, fall, winter, my jam. Spring, I tolerate. I tolerate it. But, like, how springy and beautiful and vibrant? Are you joking me? So beautiful. I actually have, like, the most perfect project for this um again it's another sale that I have ready to go but haven't started um all the other sales and starts have kind of gotten in the way but anyway it's the farming magic sale um I'll put it up here on the screen while I get my wits about me so, I've shown this before. I have it kitted up. I was supposed to start it a million years ago. Clearly have not. Um, anyway, so here are the colors that it calls for. And I was looking. Very much the same vibe. So, um, eventually what I will do is I will sub these for the similar DMCs for the pattern. Don't know when I'll get around to doing that. But eventually... Because I think, like, I don't have a lot of other stuff that this would go with. But, like, as soon as I saw this, I immediately thought of this color palette and how, like, bright and vibrant the pattern is. Um, I've been seeing everyone's, like, part one and two finishes. And they're so, it's so cute. Like, I want to stitch it so bad. Um, but that's, like, with literally everything I own. So, that's going to wrap up my little bit of haul for this episode. Um, I will move on to gratitude and book talk. So that's kind of the agenda for the rest of the video. If you want to stick around and listen to me blabber on about things I'm grateful for and what I'm reading. So my gratitude this time is going to be my stitchy friends. I, um, I've only been on floss tube since mid December. Um, I've only been stitching like seriously since August of last year. I did my first, um, finish. I think March of last year, but then I kind of just did a little, a couple things here and there. But then like August, I started the Haunted Library style and just went full in, head first, deep dive. Like I haven't come up for air since, honestly. So like I haven't been in this for like a super long time. And you know, I wanted to make a floss tube to be able to share my passion with people who also are passionate about cross stitch. And I've talked about that a lot on my channel about like how grateful I am for y'all because this is why I do this. Um, but I wanted to create like a sense of community and I wanted to have bonds over like a shared love for cross stitch. And I have found that and it is just so beautiful. I have like one on one chats with a lot of people that I deeply love and I really like those chats bring me so much joy. Um, I talk with Hannah a lot. We're like full coverage besties. Like we just constantly stay on full coverage, enabling each other, setting patterns, being like, did you see this? Did you see that? Like, love that. And then I'm in a group chat with Cam, Bridgen, Megan, Alexis, and Julie. And that group chat has honestly just transformed like 
I, saying transformed my life seems so dramatic, but like, honestly, like we, I don't know. They are like my online besties. And I genuinely feel like if we lived in the same like area, like we would be the new Golden Girls or something or Mean Girls, depending on. <laughs> We're not mean, okay? But you get, you get the gist. Like we would be a Scooby Bunch. The Scooby Gang? Let me quit coming up with like groups of people. <laughs> we would be a pretty good like tight group of friends. Like I genuine, like we relate to each other. I just, it just makes me so happy to be a part of that. When Megan, I got the invite, Megan put the little group together and I was freaking out because like I absolutely obsessed with Megan, Cam, Bridget. And like these were all people that like I had watched and loved and been like completely obsessed with. But, like I didn't want to be weird and like, be like, hey, you want to be my friend? Like, you know, I didn't want to, like, come on too strong. Um, but just, like, the occasional, like, chats or, like, over Instagram or, like, responding to stories. You know, that was, that was enough for me. But now I have a little besties chat with my besties. Like, I don't know. I don't want to blabber on because then they're going to think I'm crazy and delete me out of the group chat, which would be unfortunate. But, yeah, that's what I'm grateful for. And I mean, I'm grateful for a lot of things, but that's what I wanted to highlight this week is just the community that I have built. It is the reason that I started doing this and I feel like I feel complete in my journey as a floss tuber. Like, obviously I love creating these videos for everyone and, you know, showing y'all what I do. I love it. I love it. And I would love to continue building more relationships like the ones I've already created. All right, y'all, moving on to book talk. Um, I've read three or four books since we last talked. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of them. I read a lot of books, and some of them are just, like, okay to me. And I don't really want to clog up the channel with mediocre book recommendations. So I'm only going to stick to the ones that I really enjoyed. Um, first off is The Naturals. This is kind of like... Criminal Minds or if y'all ever watched Lie to Me it was like a really old show where they like it was like a group of people who could do like they could read like micro mannerisms or whatever and like see if you were lying or being deceptive so it's like if those two shows had a baby um it's about like a group of kids who get recruited by the FBI to go into this training program um and they help solve cold cases that's kind of like the gist of it um it gets more interesting than that because, you know, like, there has to be another storyline or there's not really a book. But we have a main character who, you know, is really good at reading people. And so she gets recruited to have, to be in this program called The Naturals. And, you know, things just go from there. She meets the other teenagers in this house and things are good and dandy. But then the two agents who are supervising them are working on like an active serial killer case. And the main character's mom was murdered, but they like never found the body. So she's, you know, she wants to do this to, I guess, essentially catch her mom's killer. Or figure out what happened to her mom or, you know, whatever. She has her motivations. Um, it was really fast paced. It was a really quick read. Um, it read like an episode of Criminal Minds. Like I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not usually a YA girly, but I mean, I really, really liked it. The second book that I have finished recently is called The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. Yeah, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. Um, this is a book of short stories about the secret lives of church ladies. Um, you know, not everything is so um, picture perfect behind the scenes. And that's what this this book explores. Um, I enjoyed every single story. Some of them were short, some of them were long, but every one felt so well developed and that I had a good feeling for the characters and their motivations and their feelings. Like it was a very well written book. I highly recommend the audiobook. That's what um, I listened to it. So that's how I listened. Yeah, that's how I listened to it. That's how I read it, essentially, was via audiobook. Um, but yeah, highly recommend that one. It's pretty short. I think the audiobook was like four hours, maybe five hours. It really wasn't long. It was super good though. So if you're 
even a little interested in reading about the messy lives of women, then I recommend that one. All right, y'all, that is going to wrap up my video for today. I think I've gone on long enough. Um, please comment below a project that you're working on or excited to work on, or if you're gonna participate in this, any of the sales I've mentioned. I mean, let me know. If there's a sale that you're doing that you think I might like, let me know, cause I'll probably join it. Like, you know, like I said previously, this is my world and I'm gonna follow my rules. And you follow your rules, you know? Don't take anything too seriously, man. Like, there's plenty of things to take seriously. A hobby is not one. I mean, like, take it seriously, but you know what I mean. Don't be, like, too serious and limit yourself or just go with the flow. Go with the flow. Anyway, I hope that you are having a great day, evening, morning, or night. I think I put that in my intro instead of my outro. We literally do not know what we're doing today. I think three weeks is too long to go without filming because I forgot how to do it. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love y'all so much. It means the world to me that y'all listen to me blabber onto my phone. <laughs> it blows my mind. I reached 700 subscribers and it's just like that many people are out here watching me talk like Talk, talk wild all the time and just blabber on about everything that I do. <sighs> anyway, I appreciate y'all so much and thank you so much for watching. And in the words of Jane, give yourself one more day. Give yourself one more day. Thank y'all. Have a good one.